Welcome to Lichtenberg in the Northwest Province and Elimination Round 4 of the 2015 Bridgestone 4x4 Club Challenge. After surviving the previous elimination rounds at Hobby Park, Bass Lake and at Atzachat, the teams headed to the infamously famous marble-covered mine dumps a few kilometers outside the town. As always, a smarty box of 4x4s lined up to do battle on the marble-like rock business ranging from the small army of Suzuki's, Landys to Jeeps, a handful of Toyotas and a few Datsuns. The teams lined up early in the morning with a chilly wind resulting in many of the Lichtenbergian men wearing two short pants instead of just one. After the safety inspections were completed and the driver's briefing done, the teams headed out for a day of tough challenges in this tough place. We kick off the action at Obstacle 1, a tough little number to get the party going. It features a steep descent, followed by a sharp right-hand turn and a short but very slippery climb. This is Werner and Arno Scarp in a Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. Let's ride with Werner. Oh, sheesh, that didn't even seem like an obstacle in the Rubicon. Unlike many other teams who compete here, Werner digs the marbles. 100%, I'm, this is my, my type of uh, track. OK, so the Jeep was like a perfect storm for this obstacle. Horsepower, diff locks and an experienced driver. Let's see how the little air-powered Suzuki SJ413 of Dani and Daniel Tate fares. The light little Suzuki has just enough momentum there and made it up and over. Whoa! Let's head to something a little bit more challenging. This is obstacle two, a nasty steep climb on the marbles. It's a progressive obstacle, so the higher you go, the more points you score. Go all the way and it's 100 points. Our first victims are Peter Gunlach and Willem Marais. Okay, let's go. They only make it halfway up the climb, but at least that's 60 points earned. Andrew Lingington and Eric von Oppel are next to tackle this climb in a Land Rover Defender Puma. And off goes the Landy. And there stops the Landy. Oh dear, how was that, Andrew? Like Dancing on marbles. Ah, here's former champion Danny Daniels and co-driver Rob Wallace. Danny's Jeep Grand Cherokee is fitted with a rear differential lock and the turbo diesel engine has plenty of low down grunt. So in theory, they should have this obstacle's number. And they're through. So that's 100 points for the Grand Cherokee team. In the cabin, Danny does a little dance of joy. <laughs> Obstacle 4 is another marble rock affair, featuring a short climb, a steep decline, a tight left turn, and then another climb up the slippery rock stuff. Our first customers here are Alec Abers and Ruand Enslin, and they're in a Ford Ranger 3.2 TDCI. For this tough round, Alec has also brought along some left front seat ballast to keep the Ranger in perfect balance while Roand gives direction from outside the vehicle. Right, so let's see how Alec and Ballast go. The long Ford has to take a stop and a rollback to get through the gate, with Ballast looking very relaxed indeed. The 4x4 
Ford easily climbs up that last hill too. But they've knocked a few poles and picked up other penalties, so that's 40 points earned. This is Vimpi and Rido Olafir, and they are Lichtenbergians. Vimpi earned himself the nickname the Vimpinator a few years ago on this very track after he piloted a Nissan patrol through one obstacle with such blistering speed, Geniel de Villiers would have approved. Nowadays, he drives a tiny but souped up Suzuki Jimny. So let's see how the Vimpinator handles this test. Yep, he still likes the speedy approach, does Mr. Vimpinator. Brian Stile and Ralph White are next to tackle this obstacle in their stock Grand Cherokee. Oh, see entry, guys. Okay. That's a more calm and collected way of going about it. The Jeep easily claws its way up that loose and rocky track. No, it was easier than what I expected. It looked much more, much more difficult than what it was. So, yeah, no, it was great. Great fun. Awesome track. This is Flip Murray and Peter Britz's little Suzuki SJ. This little Suzuki is powered by a 1,000cc engine with the same amount of power as your average lawnmower. But before we see how the little Suzuki does, it's time for a quick break. You're back at the Lichtenberg 4x4 track in the northwest province, where Flip Murray is about to tackle obstacle 4, another tricky challenge on the marble like rocks. And with a good helping of right foot, that's 100 points for the little Suzuki. Well done, lads. This is obstacle 5, and this is the Jeep Cherokee of Voli Volmerens and Teeny Mini. This obstacle involves a climb and a descent, a few tight gates and turns, and some axle twisters too. Let's ride with the Cherokee. And they take out only one pole, so that's a handy 75 points. Volley seems to have a thing about his 75 points. I can't get over 75. 75, 75, 75. <laughs> so there's always one pole jumping in front of me. <laughs> and here is defending champion Jakob van Sale and his wife Karen. Jakob drives a vintage Land Rover with no power steering and about the same amount of power as a Fiat Uno. Let's ride with Jakob and Karen.
That's 90 points in the bank for the old Landy. Not bad at all. I've got a bit of a, there's a, for, of a problem with the dry, the turn circle of this vehicle. Mm, my English. We move along to obstacle six, where Karub and Reddy and Pradi Brochobert are taking on this long and tight obstacle in their long wheelbase Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. This Jeep is very capable, but its turning circle rather resembles that of an oil tanker. So let's see how the Jeep lads go here. Just like that. With all that reversing and stopping, that's 30 points. But something is better than nothing, hey, Karuban? It was extremely tough, yeah. I had a problem with the turning circle, but so we had the stopping and reversing. Uh, with all the small pebbles, we, we slid quite a bit, but other than that, it was pretty good. Yeah. 30 points, well, not bad. <laughs> we move right along with Karuban and his long Jeep to obstacle seven, which is another tight story. In the four-door Jeep, it's a bit like trying to talk a great white shark into not taking a bite of your leg in the ocean. So it's pretty much impossible for this long wrangler to get through here without any penalties. Indeed, they score another 30 pointer here. So maybe something a bit smaller will do the trick. Something like Flip Kotzer and Hermann Stein's little Suzuki Jimny. But Flip also decides to rather stop and reverse for that tight left-hand turn, instead of losing 25 points if he connects the pole. And with open differentials, Flip uses his well-proven, when in doubt, floor it method and over goes the chimney. Having fun, Flip? Complicated. Everything here is complicated. Saki's done his best to make it difficult for us. But it's a very enjoyable one. And loose. Steady on, old chap. <laughs> Meanwhile, co-driver Herman has devised a cunning plan to ensure that he doesn't take a tumble with the cameras rolling. Well done, old chap. And on that dignified note, it's time for another break. When we return, we head to the last few obstacles, where a teeny chimney takes on a big hill, again, and again, and again. And we find out who managed to beat the Lichtenbergian marbles and who didn't. We're back in Lichtenberg and the local 4x4 club's marble-covered track. Routemaster Saki Kutsia has so far managed to even baffle the Lichtenbergians on their own track. And it's a tough day in the office for the teams. Which brings us to obstacle 10 and the always enthusiastic Charter Nadel Prinsloo in a virtually standard Suzuki Jimny. Unlike most of the other Jimnys, this one doesn't have an aftermarket rear differential lock fitted. 
Nej, der er bare ikke windshield. Ja, det er det. Det er windshield nu, Okay. Det er så langt. And this is obstacle 10, the kind of steep, slippery and rutted climb where a differential lock would be most beneficial. The first part is the easy part. Go down a steep slope, drive through a gully, and then drive up that steep, slippery and rutted slope. Jimny almost, almost makes it. Chart has to roll back a couple of meters and try again. But no cigar. The only thing that's going to get this Jimny up here is momentum. So down the slope goes the Suzuki for attempt number two. Crikey, they didn't get very far. I can't up, I can't, 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 Attempt number three, and no. Except if they hit the base of this climb at 60 k's, the Suzuki ain't going up there. So that's zero points for the Prince Luz. This is obstacle eight, and here are Andrew Lingington and Eric von Oppel in the Land Rover Defender Puma again to show us how this obstacle works. First, you have to drive down the marbles on a tight track, negotiating some axle twisters along the way. Next, you head down another decline. As steady as she goes, a tight left-hander may necessitate a rollback. Go straight back. Go back. Go, go, go. Go three meters, two meters. One meter. Go, go, go. You clear, 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 clear. And then there's one last left-hander, followed by a steep and slippery climb with a rut or three thrown in for good measure. And here's Flip and Slip Slide Hermann in their Jimny again. The shorter Jimny should do well here, but oh no, it runs out of steam at the last hurdle. Flip takes a roll back and a better run up. You 
using his favorite plant, that right foot method. And with rocks flying in all directions, the Jimmy makes it up. That was horrible. Still loose. Everything is loose here, but it's fantastic. I love these tough obstacles. Ben and Francois Pretorius drive a Jeep Grand Cherokee with a rear differential lock. And after getting through the first section of the obstacle, with nary a worry, they tackle that last climb with seemingly way too little speed. But up goes the Jeep, as if it was driving up the pavement at the shopping mall. Our last customers of the day are Sean Niemant and Chart Skierpers, who are driving a Jeep Wrangler TJ. Sean gets through the first part of the obstacle as steady as a marble-like rock. And now, just for that last climb... And with Chart doing his best bookie caught in the headlights impersonation and nearly getting a Jeep badge permanently embedded in his forehead, the TJ gets through perfectly. Time for the prizes then. <laughs> Before we get to the Lichtenbergian winners, an overview of the overall prizes that are up for grabs in this competition. In the eliminator rounds, like this one, the teams will win only points because the really big prizes will be in the game in the final event, where the top 30 teams will have a crack at top honours. Overall winners in both short wheelbase and long wheelbase classes will receive a set of Bridgestone tyres as well as a Trick Tough Dog suspension upgrade courtesy of Opposite Lock. Second place will win an LED light bar and Snowmaster fridge. And third place an Opposite Lock tyre repair kit and a Melville and Moon seat cover set. Several smaller accessory prizes will also be up for grabs for the top 10 places in each class. To the respective winners then. And in the short wheelbase class, it was Dani and Daniel Tate in the nifty little Suzuki SJ that took the win with an amazing score of 965 points, losing just 35 points on this tough track. In the long wheelbase segment, it was the experience of former champ Danny Daniels and co-driver Rob Wallace that saw the Jeep Grand Cherokee team bag a total of 805 points. And that is that. Next week, we head to one of South Africa's terror trails, Mughatli, where the top teams do battle in the penultimate round of the 2015 Bridgestone 4x4 Club Challenge. Till then, ta -ra.